In this video, I'm going to show you an entire Lightroom workflow from start to finish so you know exactly how you can use Lightroom Classic to get your image collection organized, edit your images to polish perfection and get more done in less time. Now, I have taught thousands of students how to use Lightroom Classic inside my step by step program launch into Lightroom. And I can tell you that most people are not using Lightroom to its full capabilities just because they don't understand what a post-production workflow should and could look like. So that is exactly what we're going to cover today. Now, if you're new here, hi, my name is Audrey Ann from Live Snap Love, where I help you master your camera and editing so you can beautifully capture the people and the moments that matter most. Do be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell and that way you'll stay in the loop for future videos as well. And I do want to let you know you'll find even more resources for learning Lightroom in the links underneath this video. But for now, let's go ahead, dive into Lightroom and get started working through that workflow. So here we are, we're in Lightroom. Now, before we go into the workflow and find out where everything is actually in Lightroom, I just want to very quickly run over what a Lightroom workflow is. So it's simply a series of steps, a framework, if you will, a pattern that you follow each and every time you upload an image into Lightroom. So it's a series of steps that stops you having to reinvent the wheel the whole time. You don't do different things every time you come into the program. You have a repeatable framework that you follow each and every time. And that stops you having to kind of have a mess of different rating systems or a mess of different keywords or, you know, randomly pull on sliders and do a real haphazard approach to your editing. Instead, you can edit and manage your photos with consistency and therefore confidence because you know exactly what you're doing every single step of the way. Now, a Lightroom workflow is going to look different for different people. So a hobbyist is going to look different from a large scale wedding photographers with a first, second and third tutor, for example. But the basic workflow is pretty much the same for everyone. So let's run through it. So the very first one is to get your images off your hard drive, uh, sorry, off your memory card and onto your computer and import it into Lightroom. Now, the easiest way to do this is make sure you're in the library module over to the panel on the left hand side and click on the import dialog box. And this is where we import our images into Lightroom and get them onto our hard drive at the same time. So over here on the left is where we are importing from, usually our memory card. In the middle here is what we are importing. This is kind of test photos here. And over here on the right is how we import them and where we import them to. Now, there's lots of things you can do here and I definitely would recommend that you do like file renaming and uh, applying presets on import, absolutely. But the most important one is this destination because a lot of new Lightroom users make the mistake of thinking that their files are inside Lightroom. Their images are actually inside Lightroom. They're not, they're on your hard drive or preferably an external hard drive. And you're just importing a reference to the file into Lightroom. So you always want to make sure that you choose a destination here or Lightroom will do it for you. And that's when you end up in a complete mess with files all over the place in random folders. So make sure that you select a destination. Now I'm just gonna cancel because I don't want to do that. Now that we have that first phase, completed where we have our photos uploaded and imported. Phase two is to cull and rate your images. So if we uh, have a number of tools here, and again, we're staying in the library module. So the first thing is, is obviously just to delete your images. So you can do go this through like flags and pics if you wish, and you can just delete any images that you don't want to keep. You can then go on and further categorize these by doing five stars or four stars or three stars, basically giving them a rating system. So for example, you might want to give five stars to the image that are like, wow, those are a definite four stars to ones that are kind of okay. And then three stars with what might be filler photos in the end. Or you might have a different system, one that works for you. But essentially you are doing the same thing each time. That rating system has to mean something. Now, the other thing we will do here, or I would do definitely at this point, is add in some keywords. So your keywording is over here on the right hand side. I'm not going to open it up because I have uh, people's names, clients' names in there, and uh, I use first names for some of them, so I'm not going to do that. But essentially, I would have keywords applied to some of these images, or pretty much all of my images, so that I know that I can find that image again. So keywording is so important 
for finding your images. Now there's some other things that we can do here, but generally for this stage, it's for me, it's about culling and rating, keywording, and you can possibly do some color coding. You could add them into collections, but I tend to do that later. So although I will talk about that now, I do tend to do that later in my workflow once I've finished editing because I really know which ones I want to do. So for example, this is when you can add color coding. You can mark your image as colored red. And for me, that means Instagram. That's something that I'm going to share on social media. You can also add it into collections. If I actually just open up my collections, you can see I've got all my photo book collections, macro collections. Um, I've got Project 365 collections, smart collections. I've got a training collection. So I have lots of different collections here and this again I would do this a little bit later in my workflow I'm just showing you now but you can certainly do that as well so this is as I say this is when you're gonna call and rate and if you want to you can organize just now as well or you can do that later whenever you're ready though you're ready to take your image through into the develop module and this is when the fun stuff starts because this is when we start editing to me organization is boring it's a it's a necessity rather than fun but editing is where ah, I come to life because I really, really enjoy editing my photos. It's where you can get really creative with your images. Now there's three parts to your editing framework and they stack on top of one another. So the first stack is your, uh, what I like to call getting the perfect negative. Now I'm actually gonna switch images for this one. Let me see, let's use this one here. So I'm gonna to switch to this one here. And if I go into this first panel, basic, this is where a lot of the adjustments happen. So this is where you're gonna do your white balance, you're gonna adjust all your tones, and you're gonna adjust your presence. Now, what I want to say here is this doesn't have to be mindlessly pulling on sliders, which I know a lot of people do. You can tell how much to move your exposure by. Uh, you can tell what, how much to move the white and black slider. Now I'm not gonna show you here, and that's because we have a whole free training on Lightroom that you can go and sign up to watch. You will find a link to it underneath where you're watching this video. And this is where I go and talk about how you can, you know, uh, change your white balance, how you can tell we've got it correct. Uh, I have to also talk about, uh, you know, getting your overall contrast correct uh, and loads of other tips and tricks. So please make sure that you sign up for that. You'll find a link underneath this video. Anyway, to continue with our workflow. So we do a lot there in the basic panel, but that's not all. We would also go down to the tone curve. Uh, for example, this is where you can add a little bit of extra contrast. And this is also where I would go down to detail, which is where you do your sharpening and noise reduction and also where you do, if you wish, any lens corrections if, if you want it with that particular image. And also, I don't tend to use this a lot just because of, of what I tend to shoot, but if you want to use the transform tool, you can do that there as well. So that's what I tend to do in this sort of first phase, which is a perfect negative. Now, um, some people just like a really natural looking image, in which case you might not do too much more. You will definitely do more, but you might not do too much more than this. But the next phase is your creative adjustments. And I still recommend that even if you like a natural image, you do this as well. Uh, but you, this is where you can start to play. Well, actually you can still use a tone curve. You could go back into these ones here and start playing with the tones. You can use the HSL tabs, this is where you can adjust your hue, saturation, and luminance. Color grading is fun to play with. This is where we change our midtones, our shadows, and our highlights. We use different colors, and you can do this really, really subtly. But this adds another element to your images. This is where we can get really fancy with uh, the colors in our images. And we can also do that really subtly. It doesn't have to be something that is, you know, really overdone. And this is also where I might go into the effects tab and also into possibly into the calibration. So as I say, this is your creative. This is where you start getting creative with color. This is where you might uh, turn your image into a black and white, for example. You may then add toning to your black and white. Uh, so lots of things you can do here that is more creative. And you can be as it subtle or as uh, powerful as you like. This is where your taste comes into it. This is where your personal uh, vision for your photograph comes into it as well. But lots we can do here. But 
one thing to note here is it's still all global. It gets applied to the entire image. If you really want photos that wow, you are going to move on to stage three, which is local adjustments. And these all take part up here in the local adjustments tab. Now, this is where you can just crop your photos. If you wanted to skip some of that creative adjustments, you just move on to this, start cropping your images. So when you're going to do any spot removal or healing, so for example, in this image here, that in the background is annoying me already, um, that will be getting removed. This is when you can do a red eye reduction here. I never really use that because I never get red eye really in my images. And then this one though is the one that gives you so much more control over your images. It is amazing. So if I just click on that and I click on create new mask, you get loads of options here. Now, again, in that free training I mentioned, we'd speak about these and I'll show you how a way to use them. Um, like I've done on this image, go and make sure that you sign up for that. But essentially these are just amazing tools for allowing you to edit your image uh, locally. So everything else, this applies globally, local adjustments we can do. Actually, I have a different version of this image. Let me just go into this one. And if I just uh, zoom into 100%. So what the things that I might do here, for example, is lighten up the background and the foreground. Uh, you can also do your portrait enhancements here. So things here that I've done is smoothed out the skin just a little bit. I've added a little bit of eye pop and I have made the lips look a little bit uh, pinker and uh, just generally up, kind of up the color there. Uh, it's also where I would uh, up the colors in particular areas of the image. I may sort white balance in particular areas. Uh, so this is where you can really get targeted with you your enhancements and that's so important for getting photos the way you look the way you want them to because many people think oh well you know I really want to get a great in-camera image you've got to remember your camera cannot capture a scene the way that your eyes see it sometimes we can use this to our advantage and get really creative other times we want to capture the scene the way that our eyes see it but our cameras just can't do it and this is when using things like you know the hsl and the color tab or that masking tools really allow you to create the image to look exactly the way that you wanted it to look but maybe you couldn't with your camera or maybe you're just wanting to get more creative with it so essentially that is our three parts of our editing framework that global creative adjustments that global sorry that global uh, perfect negative adjustments that global creative adjustments and then that uh, local adjustments and i have to say this we can get creative here as well this is definitely when we can do things like you know add in sun glows or or blood out the background or you know change the color of something we can definitely get creative here as well it's not just about you know fixing any in camera mistakes so once we've completed all that then we go back to the library module and this is when we move on to the next step in our workflow so we've done phase one which is to import phase two which is to call and rate phase three four and five is that three-part editing frame, uh, framework that we just spoke about phase six is when we export our images and we use them in different places we don't want images to be cluttered up in our hard drive we want them out in the world and this again we go back to the library module for this so this is when you would export your images you can go in here into the export dialog box so you could export them for a high quality print to send to the printers for example you could export them for use on social media such as instagram or Facebook or wherever there is by the time you watch this video. But this is essentially where we export the file. It's another really important thing to note is that Lightroom, uh, the edits you do in Lightroom aren't applied to the file yet. So editing in Lightroom is non-destructive, which is fantastic. You can play to your heart's content and go right back to the beginning any time you want. So when we uh, want to actually apply those images, we need to export the file. So we do that here. I'm not going to go into that. Uh, here, I'm just going to click cancel. But then that's when we, as I say, we can create prints. We can also go down here to publish services. Now I use SmugMug and this is my where I uh, back up all my photos to. Every single photo from about 2007 is on SmugMug. All my personal photos are backed up. It's where I have my galleries to give to any clients. And if I'm, you know, I share 
photos with my friends or my family. Uh, it's If I go away on holiday with people, for example, I put all the photos that I've taken up and they can download whatever they want. So it's a wonderful way. It's my uh, online cloud for storing all of my photos. And Lightroom makes it really easy for you to do this because you can actually just move them directly into Smug Mug from here. So this saves me so much time. There's other services. That's just the one I use is Smug Mug. I'll link to it below if you are interested. I think I have a code where you can get 15% off. Um, love it. But there's other ones there and you can definitely publish directly to them as well. Now, the other things you might want to do is go over here so you can create photo books directly within Lightroom. Huge, huge time saver. Uh, you can see if you went back to collections, I'm way behind. 2020 was my last one, but such a huge time saver doing them directly within Lightroom. Great quality as well. And then slideshow, you can create a slideshow of your images. And this is where you can do different print things. So, you know, we can use these last four here for shading our images. Now, I tend not to use map. That's more kind of location based, but these four are for shading. So we have in this at this point is also when I might add some images into different collections, for example, into which ones I want in my photo book. Um, if they need to, if it's a macro image and I want to put it into my macro folder, I can do that here as well. So as I said, you can do that at the beginning or here at the end. And if at the end you want to add in more keywords or anything like that, you can do that here. But essentially this last phase is shading and using your images. So that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this. Please don't forget to sign up for that free training where we actually go into some of the editing steps. You are absolutely going to love it because it's so detailed. Make sure that you sign up by clicking on the link below that you'll find in the description underneath this video, signing up and you'll be able to watch instantly. So that's it for me for this week. Thanks so much for being here and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.